Welcome to CNET and Tech Republic's Cracking Open, where we take apart the latest tech to show you what's inside. I'm Bill Detweiler, and today I'm joined by CNET's very own Aaron Carson here. Um, and Aaron has something special for us. What do you have, Aaron? I do. So I have a Samsung Galaxy S6, but it's not just a regular one. Okay. This guy has spent two months waterlogged in the mud and water in the Bay of Sausalito, California. Wow, okay. Well, this is actually uh, a coworker's phone, right? And so Aaron's gonna tell us the whole story while I'm taking it apart, but we thought this would be a really cool opportunity to show everybody what actually happens to one of these devices when they sit underwater. And this one sat under salt water, right, for two months. And it was just by chance that we found the thing or our coworker found the thing afterwards. So show everybody on the outside maybe what it kind of looks like here. Can we see? Yeah, so, so it's it's looking pretty grody. It looks like we have some corrosion around the sides here at the bottom. And kind of at the top. At the top. And I on mean, the on the side, it really starts to look like something you might see from a, like a shipwreck. Or something. <laughs> yeah. Let's go ahead and get started. Let's see what All we right. can do with this thing. So we have to go in through the back of this phone. We'll remove the plate off of the back. There's some adhesive that holds it on. Um, you can use a lot of different methods to heat this up, to heat the adhesive and loosen it up. We're gonna use our handy dandy heat gun turned on low. So while I'm doing this, Aaron, why don't you tell us, so what happened with this phone? Whose was it and how did they lose it and how did they get it back? So this phone used to belong to CNET senior producer, Andy Altman. And like any good house story, it starts with the houseboat. He has a friend who has a houseboat in Sausalito, and a bunch of them were gonna go ride their bikes. And so this one day he had the phone in the pocket of his riding jersey, and it just bounced out of his pocket while he was walking up the dock. And as you might imagine, he just sort of looked at the water and was like, well, I, I guess I'm not gonna see that again. But about two months later, during low tide, his friend actually texted him and was like, I found your phone. Wow. So they, they fished it out and, and here we are. And he tried to turn it back on or obviously it didn't work, right? It did so not, it did not actually. We're not really concerned about breaking this phone. We're not gonna try to repair this phone. This phone is toast having spent two months in salt water here in the bay. So we're gonna. Yeah, he's, he's not counting on, on getting this back. Right, think, so, so we don't have to be as gentle with this device as we normally would. So I'm gonna kick the heat up a little bit here on our heat gun. Um, you can use a hair dryer to do this when you're working with uh, adhesive. If you have a heat gun with an adjustable heat setting, you can use that. We just wanna try and take the back off without breaking it. Most people, you know, lose these in the bathroom or lose these in the washer or especially with newer phones, you know, you, there's a chance that those are actually more water, you know, resistant than perhaps they used to be in years past, right? Yeah, another really common theme, and you, you sort of alluded to this, is bathroom horror stories yeah. that people have their phone in there and it does not meet a good end. So, <laughs> I mean, everybody takes their phone to the restroom these days, right? I mean, it's just like exactly. the newspaper of old or a book or old or magazine. Everybody takes their phones, but, you know, you definitely have to be careful. All right, so um, we've managed to get the back off of this fairly easily, used a little bit of heat from our heat gun, and we'll pull the back off, and now we can kind of see what's inside. And Ooh, that's pretty... <laughs> a lot of corrosion there. You can see a lot of the damage here that we have to the phone, a lot of the corrosion. Um, you can see it looks like even maybe some of the screws here have a little bit of rust on them. Um, let's see if we can't get these out and uh, see what we can find inside. Luckily inside these Samsung phones, it, there's um, all Phillips screws, right? So it makes it a little easier to take them apart than if it's a, you know, they have special, uh, special tamper resistant screws. That's one of my favorite things about Samsung phones is that they do use standard screws once you get inside. Okay, so we've got the back off. We have got the, I think all of the screws off that I can see. Um, and, and what we're gonna do is I'm gonna try to, there's a cover on the back that covers the, um, the batteries, it covers uh, the circuit boards. Um, and so we're gonna try and remove that here as best we can and then get to some of the circuits underneath. It definitely looks like, and I probably should be, well, let's try this one. So there's some corrosion and crud, we'll call it. That's our official term. 
crud inside. I mean, it looks like the, I don't know, the battery doesn't look punctured, but it looks like we definitely have some corrosion in there. So if you're going to do this yourself, I mean, I don't recommend doing this. At this point, it probably just needs to be recycled. Get what data you can off of it. Send, if it's got pictures or anything you really need on it, you really want, send it away to a data recovery company, you know, see what they can do. Make sure I have all the, the screws undone. I think we do here. So let's see if I can't pry the body off. And the body comes off like this. This is gonna stick together a little bit here. Even after being in uh, salt water for months, there's still plenty of adhesive on this and this is the all right let me see the battery there see if i can't we can hear some crunchiness this is really unusual here no sea life so far inside this you never could tell i guess so I get this. there we go kind of popped it loose so we can see as we separate the body um, from the assembly here there are some wires in here that are connecting the back panel to the assembly here. I'm going to try and pop those loose. We'll be real gentle here. That hold the camera. There we go. Now, let's see here. There we go. So we can kind of see inside the phone now. Oh, that was that's an issue what was holding the case on. I don't know if we can see this here. This is the SIM card um, and the door had kind of stuck shut. And so it's metal uh, that holds the, uh, the SIM card uh, in place. And so that was holding the case in. I should have removed, there we go. I should have removed that first, but um, we did now. Um, all right, so the SIM card's out. Now we can see all of our dust and debris here. Um, we can see all the corrosion. We can see what sitting in salt water for two months actually does to the phone. Um, that definitely looks worse than any the inside of any phone I've seen. Yeah, it's pretty bad. And we're gonna go ahead and I'm gonna try and disconnect the battery here, disconnect everything that's underneath the battery. Here we got the battery. We'll go ahead and we'll pop the battery out. The battery has not, oh yeah, there's more. Wow. More dust, more grit, more debris in there. And I'm not sure what in here is actually corrosion because it wasn't salt water. Some of that might be, you know, sea salt from the, uh, from the west coast of the U.S. here. Miscellaneous sediment. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, other dirt, dust, you never know. I, I don't see any small sea creatures, but, you know, it would be pretty Probably hard for, the for them. That is for the best. Probably for the best. So we're going to pop off the outside camera here. Oh, there goes. So there's the, um, there's the front facing camera. Let's see if we can't pop loose. This is the speaker here, the front facing speaker. Wow, this is all dusty, man. It's crunchy. It's, it's, it's just there's dust and debris all over the place. Oh, so there's and our- And thoroughly too. It's yeah, I mean- Everywhere. It, this is everywhere. You can see the corrosion um, on the contacts here. You can see, let's see if we can't, I wanna see the chips. That's what we really wanna get to. Uh, if I can get them underneath the, uh, underneath the metal uh, shields here. Ooh, yeah, more white, more white, crusty stuff. I don't know, we can see this stuff. I mean, uh, let's, let's, let's pull this off. Last connector, oh, there we go, all right. So this would, would be the display assembly here. Um, and we can still see how one of the circuit boards connected to the bottom of it. I'm gonna leave that there. This has the ports on it, uh, the headphone jack, and then the uh, USB port there on the bottom. Um, you have the vibration, we can see our little vibration motor there. Um, so, and then the display. Let's see what seawater has done for two months to, well, the camera. Nothing good. Nothing, that's right. Nothing good. All right, so there's the camera. You know, I'm surprised. Look at the camera there, you know. Yeah. It actually, you know, you would think that the seawater would get inside these little crevices of the camera and stop, but it actually, the camera seemed to be fairly well protected inside you know, inside its little housing here on part of the case. So I don't see a ton of, you know, I don't know if this camera would actually work again if you plugged it, if you could connect it up to something, but it might, I don't know. Let's see if we can't get the, I'm gonna take off the EMI, EMF shields here. These are these electromagnetic interference shields that are put on top of the, the uh, main chips. Oh yeah, there's water inside there. And there's a couple of them here we can see. One of the things that made this easier is the tape, the adhesive, 
the salt water and the exposure to the moisture has definitely made that a little bit easier to pop through, you know. So here we have uh, the circuit board, the main circuit board inside our damaged Galaxy S6. You can see the processor here. You can see our, um, uh, our RAM chip, our storage chips here, and they're just, they're toast. Now, you know, uh, could a data recovery company take this phone, um, do you sort of the chip, a storage chip from the motherboard uh, and possibly get material off of it, that off of it? The answer is yes, maybe. If there's not too much physical degradation to the chip, um, they can desolder these from the board and pull the data off and then maybe recover it. Uh, I think it would be a long shot. In this case, it would also be pretty expensive to do that, but not impossible. So there you have it. You have a teardown of a waterlogged phone that has been in uh, salt water for two months. Lots of, uh, lots, lots, of, of dust. lots of dust, lots, lots of, of salt, lots of corrosion. You know, I'll probably have some disease on my hands from all this or chemical burns. Nah, we'll be okay. All right, well, that does it for this edition of Cracking Open. Uh, for all of our episodes, be sure to check out CNET's YouTube channel and check out Tech Republic where you can find photos and a full sort of teardown description of this Cracking Open.